People pick powerful brawlers like Tyson or Marcino and then fight nothing like Tyson or Marcino. They refuse to engage or come forward at all. That's absolute bitch shit. A lot of people in this community will tell you that one of the most annoying play styles to play against is people who pick someone like Mike Tyson, Iron Mike Tyson, one of the most intimidating and one of the most ferocious punchers in the history of boxing, and then try to play him on the back foot like he's Floyd Mayweather or something. Always on the back foot, refusing to come forward and engage and then completely abandoning Tyson's biggest strength, which is his inside fight. Yet you see this play style quite often at high levels of fight night champion head to head. And it does certainly take a level of patience to defeat it because when you combine it with straight right hand spam and then sidestep uppercut spam, this play style can be hard to beat. Consider this video that I'm uploading today as a companion piece to another YouTuber who goes by the name of Mr. Ball Bully, a great up and coming fight night content creator who I recommend subscribing to. He's been putting in that work for years and someone who I would consider as an ally in cleaning up the garbage that's run rampant in online fight night champions. I highly recommend checking out his content, it's very well edited and well produced, so when you get there, tell him Sniper sent you. To give you the backstory of my opponent, this guy goes by the name Mark the Shark 2236 a Canadian loudmouth Mike Tyson user who's ranked number 66 for the month at the time of this recording and has an impressive 1049 win to 243 loss record at the time of this recording as well. For the last few months he's been spamming lies, nonsense and bullshit all in my comment section and other YouTubers comment section in the Fight Night Champion community. At first I didn't understand what his motive was. But after I did some digging, I finally figured it out. See, Mark the Shark is an upstart YouTuber with four whole subscribers, with his most recent video being a highlight reel with some badly edited amateur garbage that he's trying to pass off as content. So then it made sense to me why he's on my jock strap so hard. He's one of the many people who wish to upstart their little old YouTube channel by skipping the hard work that it takes to build your platform and relying on a hope and a prayer that he can get a win off of someone like me in hopes of boosting his viewership. He's following this current trend of these fight night nobodies who are going around and straight up lying in the comment section of their supposed achievements. Like take a look at this comment here. He's going around saying that he beat Malky Pablo, which we know that is straight up cap. Because if this were true, don't you think he would have uploaded this to his little old channel to get him some clout? Because that's the kind of generation that we're in, the clout chasing generation. I'm going through his content right now and I don't see no footage of Mark the Shark versus Malky Pablo. So if you say that you beat him, Show the tape. Where's the proof? Because it's it's weird to me seeing how many weirdos in this community continue to lie like this without no proper evidence to back up their nonsense. Like I said earlier, Mark the Shark has been barking like a dog to anyone noteworthy to get some attention to himself. So let's see what he has to say. All the fuckers on that list of bugs. I'm the champ. Canadian Tyson, no way any of you bums can beat me. I'm calling you out, LX Sniper, LOL. What's your game attack? I don't recall our fight, you definitely can't beat me. He's a bum, you're all bums. I'm the best online fighter, I beat everyone. I beat Mount Pablo also. I'm accepting challenges, LX Sniper, nothing. Fight me, you scrub. Since it's attention that you want, your wish is my command, sir. 
because my recommendation is if you see this guy online just back out of the matchup screen and don't bother playing him because all he's going to do is run on the back foot with Mike Tyson mind you and start spamming nothing but sidestep uppercuts and straight right hands and only looking to counter punch if you got 10 rounds to kill then maybe you'll find some enjoyment out of this but I sure as hell didn't if you decide to play against this upstart running spammer just know that his entire strategy is to only counter punch while going backwards with Tyson and he's also very good at combining the perfect block and head movement in order to get you to miss your punches and tire yourself out but all you got to do is land some hard shots to the head and to the body and go on the back foot yourself because I can assure you that Mark the Shark would rather jump off an airplane with no parachute then come forward and press the fight in a combat video game. Yeah, he's that much of a pussy. And the reason why I call this a companion video is because while I got the job done by making the correct on the fly adjustments to win the fight, I would have rather knocked him out. That would have been a much more satisfying way for me to win against a pussy like Mark the Shark. And to be honest with you all, I think this is one of my worst performances in a while. I There was just a lot of things I wish I could have done or changed during the fight, but hey, it was still enough to get the dub. And unanimously, I beat him seven rounds to three. So, as they say... A win is a win. A win, a win is a win. I don't care what y'all say. Which brings me to Mr. Ball Bully's video, where he comes in, he straight up brutalizes this clown in a way that I wish that I could have. He exposed Mark the Shark's atrocious punching technique by getting right in his face and knocking him the fuck out. All the while using the same fighter that Mark is using, Mike Tyson. So, in other words, Mr. Ball Bully played Mike Tyson the way that he was supposed to be played, and he did exactly what the fuck he was supposed to do. With all due respect, Ball Bully, you beat this top 100 Mark the Shark Clown in a much more menacing fashion than I did. Which is why I recommend everyone here to go check out his video after you're done watching mine. I think my video is a good example of how to defeat outboxers by outboxing them and then using their own style against them. But I think that it's a good idea to watch Mr. Ball Bully's video to see how you go in for the kill and finish these types of clowns off. There's more than one way to skin a cat, but you'll also see two ways where we both get the job done, but yeah, Mr. Ball Bully's video was way more satisfying and much more, I enjoyed it. That's all I can say is that I enjoyed the shit out of it. So to Mark the Shark, I hope you're satisfied with the clout that you've been working so hard to chase. Because now everyone knows how much of a bitch you are. You are a player to be avoided. And I recommend anyone who sees that username Mark the Shark 2236 pop up on your screen to just don't bother and back out of the matchup screen immediately. He's another poser who's trying to build a reputation without putting in the work that goes along with it. So instead of you going around and lying on other YouTubers in the Fight Night Champion community, I hope one day that I get to see a commentary video on your own channel of how LX Sniper kicked your ass or how Mr. Ball Bully knocked you the fuck out. Maybe this video here will help you get to at least 10 subscribers on your little old garbage channel, sir. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm done with you. I will never in my life fight you again. You gave me exactly what I needed, which was content. Look, you're just a means to an end for me. Because now you can add yourself to that ever-growing list of opponents who got sniped by the sniper and be a part of gaming history. As I go 100 and 0 against the Fight Night Champion. Top 100. Enjoy, everyone.
everybody. Glad you've made the decision to be with us. Alongside Teddy Atlas, I'm Joe Tessitore. We're glad to be bringing you action and welcoming you to Vegas, where they do it bigger and better than any other city when it comes to the big time fight. We're at the Thomas and Mack Center for our main event. Ten rounds of heavyweight. We are looking forward to this fight, especially after seeing what happened at the weigh-in yesterday. A stare down that nearly resulted in a bout breaking out right there. Now they get to do it for real. Mike Tyson is now making his way to the ring. And you can see how focused he is to the task at hand. like with Mike, there's such a commitment to that upper body move. Yeah, you know, without that, he's not Mike Tyson. That's what separates him. It's good you brought that up. We've had guys like Ernie Shavis, Big Cat, Cleveland Williams. I mean, they were big guys. They, were, they could punch maybe as hard as Tyson. They didn't win a world title. Tyson's vehicle to really get there, to get to the finish line, to the world title, was his upper body move. He'd make you miss, and he would create opportunities for those powerful shots. Halfway through round number one, and another right hand comes in. They said synthetic drugs would give me a safe high. Synthetic drugs would give me a safe high. They lied. Find out the truth about synthetic drugs. Drugfreeworld.org. Hey, 
that, babe. He has an ability to be elusive. The other guy only has power. It's gonna go Tyson's way. He has too many weapons. through this round here. That's okay. Mike Tyson That's right. putting forth that it. hard work he did in training it. camp there, landing a crisp combination. Comes right back with some offense of his own. Tyson's work in training camp is now paying off. Do you see the accuracy and the effectiveness with that combination? Carries that punch intended for the head. He gives as well as he takes. You saw it on that exchange. Tyson's knowledge of the game is showing through. Three ways to defend. One of them is the block. He did it there well. Teddy with you here in between rank coming to a sensational end for him when he gets off the stool here. Well, he's showing that to you right now. I'm looking at him right now, and he's starting to get up. There's a couple seconds left. There's probably five seconds left before he has to get up, and he's getting up early. That shows you right what you're talking about. He can't. He's chomping at the bit. He's constant. to be here teddy is one dimensional the last thing you want to be in anything to be successful is one dimensional i mean if you're a comedian you don't want to be saying the same jokes all the time your crowd's not going to be there well your opponent is going to be there all night long if you do the same thing hey man come on now. staying away from come those headshots with his defense up top this third round. Teddy's scorecard through three rounds. Now he places that hook right to the body. Able to show you his blocking ability. Mike Tyson's not throwing yeah, the power it. punches, Teddy. What would you say to him? Well, first of all, I would say to him, what do you think, that he's going to make a deal with you? If you don't hit him hard, he won't hit you hard? No, no, it doesn't work like that, my friend. He's going to get confidence now. He's going to take advantage of this. Well, 
You can see what he wanted to do there, but unable to land that body shot. And a big right hand comes crashing home from Tyson. Halfway through round number four. Nice one-two by Mike Tyson. imploring him to go out and win it. Carry that punch away. Still plenty of time to work here in round number five. Minute and a half to go. Good defense upstairs to stay away from that offensive assault. his opponent struggling so much here. Why can he not land three headshots? Well, one reason is his opponent is moving his head. He's doing a good job of being elusive. But there's no change. He's just throwing straight, naked punches at him. He needs to make a little adjustment, a little adaptation. He needs to feint a little bit, get a false movement, get him out of position, get him off balance, and then time him a little bit. If he keeps just throwing at him, he's going to keep doing what he's doing, move air around. All right, Teddy, let me put you back in your old job. You're going to train now. We're just fight. coming off of a round. Just keep this competitive fight that your guys probably win. Yeah, I know what not to tell him. I'm not telling him he's winning. That's what I'm not telling him. I want to make sure that he keeps his edge. You know, he stays smart and everything. But the only reason that I think he's up is because he's keeping the punch output. He's staying sharp defensively. You know, he's still attacking in the spots that he should attack. I want to keep it that way. They trade shots. He comes back with a right hand. Nice 
work by Mike Tyson. Comes right back at him with a left hand. Good job protecting himself. Good action here tonight. Both guys bringing their best, and both guys meeting each other stride for stride, punch for punch. Tough fight to score here as we're back underway. Blocking that punch. Very good defense by Mike Tyson. He has found his groove with this right hand. point of round seven. A little something for his opponent after getting tagged. There's a nice left hand able to get in. He's got that certain something that's a well-acquired skill in this grappling boxing, and that is superb defense. And it's on target tonight. It is. The old timers would say, you know, it's the it hard thing right, to learn right. defense. You know, the easy part, the fun part is letting your hands go. So he got the hard part down. Guess what? He's enjoying the fun part right now because of it. But he knows there's still hope. Punches and punches working well. Turns the favor with a right hand of his own. Hey, we gotta get some of that too. Now, come on, let's nice go. jabs there by Mike Tyson. Last ten seconds of the eighth round. That's a nice left hand from Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson's got to find a way, but not if they're just drifting off to space. Absolutely, if space is it. He's in space. He's too far away. He has to get the right range. Oh, he just misses with that head shot. He digs in, trying to bank away body shots with the combo.
boxer that wants to do just that. Find the target, get the combination working, land both punches. Back to the box. Ninety seconds into the ninth round. A good block. Really frustrating his opponent now, as he's so defensively sound, it doesn't make for an easy target. No, it doesn't, and it makes for a very frustrating night for his opponent. I see his opponent now, if you notice, he's getting a little tentative. He's afraid to let the punches go because when he misses, he's worried he's going to leave it open. Fires right back at him. up defensively protecting the head halfway through this 10th and final round Two pulls the trigger right away after taking one. Ten seconds to go in this, the final round. Oh, he took some damage, but he gave some back with the right hand. We I hope you didn't think you was going to win the decision with that bullshit, man. You got all in my YouTube comments talking nonstop, 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 nonstop for that. For you to pick Mike Tyson and literally be on the back foot, you had an opportunity of a lifetime to at least get a knockdown or something. But you chose to run in the 10th round when you knew you was getting your ass kicked. Man, that was the worst type of garbage that I've ever seen in my life. Mark the Shark, let me give you some news for you. If you fight like a coward, you're going to get coward results. Okay? You're going to get coward results. And that's exactly what happened. So go on my YouTube channel and talk about that. Comment on that, bitch. Comment on that ass whooping. I bet you won't. Because you ain't nothing but a scrub. You the real scrub. Is this the best that you got? This 100 and 0 shit is easy for me, man. You ain't nothing. You got dominated. And I'm never going to fight you again. Ever in my life. Fuck that. And fuck you trash ass bitch I'm a motherfucking thug
Let me tell you who to blame. Blame your mother for bringing you into this world when she was but a kid herself and for dragging you up, not bringing you up. Blame society for not giving you hope. Blame your father for not being there, the man who looked after himself instead of looking after you. Blame the dead boy, blame your mother, blame society, blame your father, blame the gun, blame anyone but yourself, but yourself, but yourself, but yourself.